Hello, and welcome to the 16th episode of Death Row Executions. Today's story is on Teresa Wilson Bean Lewis, who was executed in 2010 and was the first woman in the state of Virginia to be executed by lethal injection and the second woman to ever be executed in Virginia, with the first one happening all the way back in 1912. Teresa Lewis was born on April 26, 1969, to a poor textile mill working set of parents. As a young child, she didn't get into any type of trouble and even sang in her church choir. In her teens, she ended up meeting a boy at her church, and the two had a daughter together by the name of Christy Lynn Bean. Teresa was only 15 years old when she gave birth to Christy, and being that both families were involved in the church, they felt that the two marrying would be the best option, so Teresa married her first husband when she was just 16 years old. Unfortunately, Teresa struggled academically and the load was too much for her, so she ended up dropping out of high school and eventually got a divorce from her husband. Soon after the divorce, Teresa turned to alcohol and painkillers, but was still somehow able to raise and have custody of her daughter. Most likely due to the alcohol and drug abuse, Teresa could not keep a job and up until the age of 30, she had over 20 odd jobs that she was not able to keep. Finally, in the beginning of the year 2000, at the age of 31, Teresa found a stable job working at the Dan River Textile Mill, where she met her manager, Julian Lewis. The two began taking a liking to one another, and by mid-2000, the two had moved in together. Julian's wife had just recently passed away, so he was a widow with three kids by the names of Jason, Charles, and Kathy Lewis. Teresa brought along her then 16-year-old daughter, Christy Bean, and the six of them lived together in Julian's home. Not too soon after moving in, Teresa married Julian. The following year in 2001, Julian's eldest son, Jason, passed away in a car accident. Julian was able to receive about $200,000 in life insurance on his son, and with that money, he went to Pennsylvania County, Virginia, and bought a home that was stationed on five acres of land. The following year, in 2002, Julian's middle child, Charles Lewis, had joined the army and was anticipating being deployed and fighting in Iraq. In preparation for the possible dangers, Charles decided to get a life insurance policy for $250,000 and designated his father, Julian, as primary beneficiary and his stepmother, Teresa Lewis, as the second beneficiary. A few months later, Teresa Lewis began to devise her master plan. Late 2002, Teresa met two men at a local Walmart and began a sexual relationship with both men. One man was 21-year-old Matthew Jesse Schallenberger, whom she eventually fell in love with, and the second man was 19-year-old Rodney Lamont Fuller. On October 23, 2002, Teresa gave Matthew and Rodney over $1,000 along with sexual favors in order for them to purchase guns and ammo that would be used to kill her husband Julian and her stepson Charles, who had actually just come home weeks earlier to visit from his army training in Maryland. Her plan was to collect the life insurance money on Charles, and in order to do that, she also needed the primary beneficiary to be gone. Matthew and Rodney attempted to kill Julian while driving in the community, but were unsuccessful. Just a week later after the first attempt, on October 20, 2002, Teresa's second plan came into fruition. Late in the evening, when it was time for everybody to go to sleep, Charles went to his room and fell asleep. Julian and Teresa prayed and then laid down in the bed next to each other. In the middle of the night, Teresa opened their back door and then proceeded to the kitchen and stayed in the kitchen until the murders were complete. Not too long after she opened the back door, Matthew and Rodney came in at around 3.15 a.m. wielding guns. Rodney went alone to Charles' bedroom and shot him with a shotgun. After noticing that the first shot did not kill him, Rodney Fuller shot him two more times with a shotgun. While Rodney was killing Charles, Matthew Schallenberger was in the other bedroom killing Julian. Teresa waited close to an hour before calling the police, and before she called them, she gathered $300 that was in her husband's wallet and split it amongst the two men before they left the crime scene. 
The sheriff's deputies were first to the scene, but unbeknownst to Teresa, Julian was still clinging on to life, and the deputies were able to hear Julian's last words before he passed away, which were, My wife knows who done this to me. This was being said while Teresa was in the kitchen telling responding deputies that the two unknown assailants killed the two in a home invasion. No one was arrested that night, but within a couple of days, Teresa tried to withdraw $50,000 from her husband's bank account with a forged check. Less than a week after the murder, Teresa was brought in for questioning and confessed everything to investigators. She led police to Rodney and Matthew as well. There were three separate trials for the murders, and for Teresa's murder trial, the judge believed that Teresa was the mastermind. During her trial, Teresa's attorneys wanted her to plead guilty to the murders in order to avoid going to trial with a jury in hopes that a judge would give her some leniency for cooperating and understand her low mental IQ. A psychiatrist actually tested Teresa and found out that her IQ was a mere 72. Teresa's attorney stated, she's not mentally retarded, but she is very, very close to it. Not only that, it was found that Teresa was still abusing drugs and was diagnosed with dependent personality disorder. Despite this, Teresa chose to plead not guilty. She was sentenced to death in 2003 because in the state of Virginia at the time, if you murder more than one person within a three-year period, you are subject to the death penalty. So Teresa got the death penalty even though she did not pull the trigger, but the two men who actually did the killing received life in prison for their trials because they pled guilty. Teresa's daughter also was sentenced to five years in prison as a co-conspirator because she was aware of the murder before it happened and did nothing to prevent it. After Teresa was sentenced, she was granted an automatic review by the Supreme Court of Virginia. The review mentioned that it was unfair to execute Teresa while the other men got life sentences. Although it was a fair review, it was ultimately rejected. Teresa was put on death row at the Fluvanna Correctional Center for Women in Troy, Virginia, and she was the only woman in the state of Virginia on death row at that time. The following year, in 2004, a private investigator met with Matthew Schallenberger on behalf of Teresa. The investigator transcribed what was being said, and Matthew was quoted saying, Teresa was in love with me. She was very eager to please me. She was also not very smart. Matthew ended up tearing off the bottom of the transcribed affidavit with his signature on it and ate the paper. He said, what will happen will happen, and a couple of years later, in 2006, Matthew committed suicide in his cell. As for the other murderer, Rodney Fuller, he went on record saying that he believed Matthew Schallenberger was the one in charge and not Teresa. They found out later that Matthew had an IQ of 113. While on death row, Teresa massed many followers and supporters who ended up sending over 7,000 appeals for a more lenient sentence to Governor Bob McDonnell. Teresa also was quoted pleading to the governor, I just want the governor to know that I am so sorry, deeply from my heart, and if I could take it back, I would in a minute. I just wish I could take it back, and I'm sorry for all the people that I've hurt in the process. Governor Bob McDonald declined to grant clemency. He stated that having carefully reviewed the petition for clemency, the judicial opinions in this case, and the other relevant materials, I find no compelling reason to set aside the sentence that was imposed by the circuit court and affirmed by all reviewing courts. On September 17, 2010, he decided not to stop Teresa's execution. Teresa's attorneys filed again to the U.S. Supreme Court for a stay of execution on September 21, 2010, but were again denied. Two dissenting judges by the names of Ruth Ginsburg and Sonia Sotomayor mentioned that if they were the ones making the decision, they would have granted clemency. On September 23, 2010, it was time for Teresa's execution day at Greensville Correctional Center in Virginia. She spent the day praying and singing religious songs to herself. Her last meal consisted of peas, Dr. Pepper, two pieces of fried chicken breast, and apple pie. Teresa Lewis was taken to the execution chamber and strapped in. Her stepdaughter, Kathy Lewis, was there to witness the execution, and Teresa actually asked if she was there. Knowing she was, her last words were, 
I just want Kathy to know that I love you and I am very sorry. Teresa was then injected with the lethal injection concoction and her official time of death was at 9 o'clock p.m. Thank you for taking the time to listen and watch this video. If you are still here, I would like to pose a few questions for you guys to discuss in the comments below. Question 1. Who do you feel was the mastermind of this double murder? Question number 2. Do you think Teresa had Julian's first son Jason killed in a car accident?